I, I just uh, to sort of sum up the evening, I, I'd like to ask you, um, thinking about any of the notes, questions, or complaints that you've heard when working with directors and producers uh, when looking at a cut, can you just, each of you, sum up your favorite advice and tip to all of us here? Okay, <laughs> take it away, Brandy. <laughs> well, I think I think I kind of touched on this earlier, um, but having jumped careers, um, the process that I go through is is watching as much as I can. I'm sure you guys probably do the same. If you're going to be on an episode of television, if other episodes exist, you watch. Um, but it's what to watch for. So obviously, you need to understand the story and who the characters are and and what the arcs are and all of those things. But also, like I said, understanding some of the mechanics, some of the, the idea of the rhythm and the pace and things like that to better inform you. Even, even when it comes to, like, turning the sound down, by the way, is a great way to see how the, how the film goes together, how the TV show, show goes together. So you can even look at the blocking so that, um, depending on your director, I'm a director that likes to see what the actors want to do first before I jump in to see what comes naturally. So if you have an idea of what the blocking is usually like on the show, then that just informs you better on, on the day of the rehearsal, um, understanding the pace and the rhythm and things like that. So just really studying the show itself before you walk on set um, goes a long way because um, I know as a director when I walk on set and I can refer to, oh, on the episode where you did da 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 da, they're like, okay, you know, so they know you've done your homework and, and whether, and honestly, if it's, if it's even, I had an actor who, he had, he had one line and it was a funny line, thankfully, so like he got, I felt like he got to do something more than just say a line and walk away. I'm like, let's have fun with it, let's make it funny. But he'd, he'd done enough, he didn't watch three episodes or three seasons of Dynasty, but he understood the tone of the show and I think that's really important, I think tone, is what mostly gets missed by directors and often by actors, and that's the thing that gets harped on a lot in the cutting room in television. Because, as that, if the tone isn't correct, then they're reshooting. Because that's that's a big big problem. So so just looking for those bigger, broader strokes to bring to the to the table. Um, I I think it goes back to what I said in the beginning: is you know to think loudly. Um, and um, the thing that stops an actor, like as an editor, get, get f you, like I said, we're there to make you look good. We're, we're there to protect you every way we can. But sometimes you could see an actor stepping out from themselves and they're kind of watching what they're doing. So they're not like totally into the scene and they find things to do that's annoying, you know, like the whole business with the hair. Every, I mean, I had an actor, an actress who was like, every, I mean, every line, there was a thing with the hair. Now I have to cut around that because then it starts looking silly, you know. And I also had an actor who had a fascination with his prop of glasses, his eyeglasses. So he had it, you knew it was a prop because <laughs> Be, because every time, every time he said the line that was important, he would take the glasses off. <laughs> so then it became a running joke with us, right? Nobody, nobody does that. Nobody's like so. the, exactly <laughs> right, like Miami Vice. <laughs> Anyways, um, but but you know, I think the thing is, come be prepared. Enjoy what you're doing because we can tell through the camera, whether you're enjoying yourself or not, and whether you're in the character. And, and you know, we don't have to say this to you because you're trained and you, you loved your craft. Just keep learning. You know, when you go on a set, just be aware of what uh, the other people on the set are doing, like the lighting guy, you know, so that you're stepping on your mark and you're gonna, you know, this is from experience, you're gonna feel where the light is. Always stay in the light. M my husband was a gaffer, and he worked on a show with Peter O'Toole. And Peter was quite the, you know, he intimidated a lot of people. <laughs> and so my husband said to him, he goes, Peter, if you step another six inches, you'll be in the light. 
And he goes, why do I have to do this for my art, right? And he's just going on and on and on. And you got to know my husband. He goes, okay, fine. Don't sip in the light. We won't see you. So when it came time to shoot, he stepped into the light. And he came over and he apologized. So, you know, and also be nice to your editor because we could help you. They're helping you more than you know. That's right. Well, <clears throat> about, you know, hitting your mark and, uh, you know, getting into the light, being able to do that without looking down at it yes. seems to be like <laughs> one of the right. most difficult things of all time. So perfecting that, I think, would help a great deal. <laughs> Actually, that's a great point because so if, if you watch shows, it, it, entrances especially, of <laughs> actors in the scenes, 80% of them are going to do that <laughs> as they walk up to the line and, uh, because they're looking for their mark. Do that in rehearsal. <laughs> Count how many steps and how long those steps are before you, you, the camera's rolling. Because, uh, and again, what I said earlier, you know, know your character. I, there was a shot I saw. I, I, I'm a junkie for old Law & Orders. I'm sorry. I just love them. <laughs> but, uh, Don't there, apologize. There a lot of a, us are. There, there was a, uh, a shot in the captain or chief or whatever she is uh, in her office where this uh, young lady officer walks in with some reports that she just got in and hands them to one of the detectives standing there. And she did it so simply and just had two lines, whatever, whatever they were. Here's those reports you were looking for or something like that, all right? And hands them to the cop. And you can just feel magnetism between her and that cop. And she doesn't do anything that you're directly aware of, but you sense it. When, and when she leaves the room, you go, oh, what's going on? You know, and, 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 and it was so beautifully done because you, uh, it, if, if you're not really looking for it, 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 it just goes by. She came in, gave him the papers, and walked out. But... Uh, because I'm a junkie for the show, I picked up on it, and I just loved it. And I think those are the kind of little things that, you, that if you're really living the part, you can bring that to the performance. And there's no, if it's in the script and if they're shooting it, it's not a small part. It's an important part. So, so take advantage of it and make the most out of it. And uh, yeah, don't do crazy things because th there are some days, times you'll see like on day players, They'll try to be doing strange things when they're on camera because they say, well, this is going to force the editor to stay on me. Uh-uh, it just means the editor's not going to cut to you. <laughs> so, so just keep that in mind. But just, just be natural. Be, be the character and uh, deliver your lines or your look, whatever it is you're supposed to be doing in the scene, and let it go, and, and you'll come off great. That's true. I just want to share a quick thing that you were talking about. The action. We had an explosion in a building, and I look over and I see a group of four guys doing shots that were extras, and I'm like, what are they doing over there? <laughs> this is completely inappropriate, and so we shut that down. So don't, don't, don't improv when you're an extra. <laughs> oh, that, that, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I think I'll just sum up what I was saying before. Just be present, be conscious about your character, what you're doing. Um, just know that as soon as you sit down or stand in front of the camera and we turn it on, I'm looking at you. And you know, you take that opportunity. How, how, how precious are the moments that you have in front of the camera? So stay in character. If you walk onto the set and you're standing here and the camera goes on, be in character. Start, start from the moment before I say action so that you don't have to go snap into character, right? You're already there and you can already start. Um, listen, give me something I can cut to. And when I say, and if I don't say cut right away, just keep reacting, stay in that moment, don't get uncomfortable. Um, also, I think doing theater is so helpful because I would say 50% of any close-up you're, sometimes you're looking at a green piece of paper on a box because the actor can't get in here because there's so much going on. 
So the actor's way over here giving you his or her off-camera lines, and you're looking at, and the, and the operator will say, uh, okay, so your eye line is right here, and there's a piece of tape on the top of the map box on the camera. And you're supposed to look at that box like it's somebody you've been in love with all your life. So, you know, it's, it's your imagination. It's not dependent on what the other person is doing. And if you get to work with Viola Davis or Colby Smulders or, you know, um, uh, you, you get to work with one of these wonderful actors, that's, that's icing on the cake. Um, but really, you know, if I chose you to come and do this role, it's because I liked the, I liked the world you were inhabiting and that's what I want you to bring. So just have that confidence that you're here because you're supposed to be. And you were talking about being a star in that moment that you're on. Um, there's a story that um, Anthony Hopkins likes to tell. It was his first play and he had, you know, he was like spear carrier number two or something. And Laurence Olivier was the star of the play and he called him into his dressing room after a show. And he said, um, so Tony, you know you're the star of this show. And he said, oh no sir, you're, you're the star of this show. And he said, but when you say your line to me, is anyone else speaking? And he said, no, it's just me. And he said, in that moment, you are the star of the show. So you must take command of the stage. Don't apologize for your existence, revel in it. So that's what I would, give to you, that's what I would say to you, that when you are on screen, when you are on stage, you are the star of that moment. You know, again, you don't need to do something that you think was going to attract my attention. Just be simple, be in the character, do your job. If you do your job well, I will keep cutting back to you. This is great stuff, <laughs> thanks. Thank you all for coming here. Thank you to our amazing panelists.